Delphine LaLaurie. April 10, 1834, in New Orleans, Louisiana. A fire erupted at the mansion located at 1140 Royal Street in the French Quarter. It was the home of Delphine LaLaurie and her husband, Dr. Leonard LaLaurie. The fire was started by the cook, a 70-year-old slave. The woman had been chained to the stove and was beaten regularly. She allegedly started the fire in an attempt to kill herself and escape the cruelty of her master. Marie Delphine McCarty was born March 19, 1787 in New Orleans. Her uncle was governor of Louisiana and Florida and her cousin was mayor of New Orleans. Delphine married her third husband, Dr. Leonard, in 1825. He was 16 years younger than her. She met him when she took her daughter to see him for a curved spine. He didn't fix the girl's spine, but he stole her mother's heart. By this time, Delphine had her own fortune and commissioned the mansion on Royal Street herself. She gave birth to the couple's son five months before they were married. The happiness was short-lived and the couple began fighting so loudly that the neighbors could hear. Some reports say that Dr. Leonard moved out in early 1834. Fighting wasn't all the neighbors heard. There were also rumors that Delphine treated her slaves inhumanely, despite laws in New Orleans that prohibited such treatment. In 1833, Delphine's personal slave, 12-year-old Leah, fell or jumped or was pushed to her death from the third story of the house. The young girl was brushing her mistress's hair when she hit a snag. This sent Delphine into a rage. She chased Leah around the house, finally cornering her by the window. The young slave died when she hit the sidewalk below. Rumor says that she was buried that night in the yard of the property. This led to an investigation of the treatment of the LaLaurie slaves. The inquest found that their conditions were deplorable and nine of them were sold. Delphine was fined and the window from which the young girl fell was concreted over. Unfortunately, the slaves were sold to a relative of Delphine's who bought them back and secreted them into the mansion in the middle of the night. When the fire broke out in the house in 1834, the police, fire marshals, and neighbors rushed to the scene. They found the slave quarters locked. They needed to evacuate and requested the keys to the attic, but the LaLauries did not hand them over. A group of men broke the door down and the literal skeletons in Delphine's closet were exposed to the public. Accounts vary, but there were at least seven slaves in the small room who had clearly been there for months. All of the men, women, and at least one child had suffered torture. Their bodies were mutilated. The slaves found in the LaLaurie mansion were starving and showed signs of being beaten. They were taken to be cared for and displayed to the public as proof of the crimes committed against them. Almost 2,000 people came to see them. Two of the slaves taken from the mansion that day died soon after. A search of the property uncovered at least two shallow graves on the property. Delphine fled from the mansion in her carriage and never returned to New Orleans. Dr. Leonard abandoned her and their son a few years later. The house was ransacked by an angry mob. The house stayed empty for many years before it was converted to a school for girls in the mid to late 1800s. Actor Nicholas Cage purchased the house in 2009. In 2011, it was auctioned off after the actor filed bankruptcy. It is currently a private residence. There is some debate as to whether the slaves were mistreated solely by Delphine or if her husband was also to blame. Some reports say that much of the abuse inflicted on the slaves was done by the doctor who was conducting medical experiments on them. Delphine died in Paris in 1849. Her body was taken back to New Orleans and buried in the St. Louis Cemetery No. 1 in 1851. The house is now a regular stop for ghost hunters and tours of New Orleans. Please visit www.icantbelieveitsnonfiction.com. 
and don't forget to subscribe.